Hi everyone, welcome back to the Pro MMA Betting Podcast. We're going to be talking about UFC 241 coming up this Saturday. This is going to be a quick fire round for me. It's not going to be a hour, hour and a half, two hour podcast like I normally do. I'm actually away from tomorrow, so I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to even do this podcast. But I didn't want to miss out because it's such a solid card. I wanted to put my picks out there, give my opinion on some odds and so forth. So it's going to be more of a quick fire round where I'll just kind of fly through the fights. I'm not going to be going too deep onto them, into them rather. Just a quick recap on last week's results, as we always do. Didn't I barely had any pre-bet action, as I said last week. I didn't like the card for betting at all. I'm not going to false bets. Um, two reasons, re- well, three reasons. A, it's just a dumb thing to do. It's very hard. It's a very hard thing as a better not to false a bet, especially when you bet on MMA solely. Because with MMA, you only have one show a week, if that sometimes, to bet on. So sometimes, you know, you want to you want to scratch that itch. And if it's an event you don't want to bet on or you've not really got any heavy lanes, and it's like, well, I'm not going to be betting for a couple of weeks. And, you know, you've got to be very careful with gambling. It is very addictive. So you've got to be able to sometimes say no. A lot of other people out there that provide tips on, like, baseball and things like that, I mean, there's baseball games pretty much every single day of the baseball season so it's very easy when you're betting in that arena to to say look I'm going to pass today because you you can have a bet the next day and with MMA the yeah the events just aren't as frequent and as I said you sometimes you know if there's no UFC for three weeks I mean now these days you normally have some kind of event in between like a Bellator or, or something will crop up so it's it's very rare to go kind of three weeks say without actually having an MMA show to bet on but then you've got the other side of the coin is whether you want to be betting on Bellator. It's a lot a lower level, generally speaking. Um, you know, it's a lot of weird stuff happens in other organisations. So, so yeah, it's very it's very difficult to say no to a bet on the UFC event. But there's that reason. Also, I bet a thousand pounds per unit. Uh, you know, I've done it in the past. I've forced bets when I shouldn't have. And for me, if I'm, you know, if I put out a couple of bets for a couple of units and they both lose, I'm losing four grand and I hate losing. Um, And it gets worse when you up your stake size. So there's that reason as well. And I've also got a responsibility to my members to not be putting out bets that I'm forcing. I need to be happy with them. So that's why I swerved the event. I, I had a double that was closed. It was a small one unit bet to return half a unit. The double got closed. So we did win half a unit on pre bets followed over from the following week the first leg was a boxing match to go to distance which hit so we just needed leg two in the UFC to hit which did um, I did make some personal plays that I didn't tip to members I was tweeting them out just before the, the fights begun and I posted the bet slips and so forth so um, I did actually have a, a small winning night as a the tipped bet aside from my own personal plays but I, I wasn't betting big uh, it was like 500 pound bets I had I um, had a few um, just to kind of um, scratch that itch as I described it earlier and uh, yeah I mean if they didn't come in it wasn't the end of the world for me it was you know half unit plays and I was confident I was going to at least break even on them and yeah I made a, a small profit but yeah this event I like it a lot more for betting so there are pre-bets out with members they've got a couple at the moment I might be adding um, I'm going to see, I'm kind of going to finalise it tonight if I'm going to add any more but yeah there are pre-bets with members, one is a, a max play um, so yeah let's talk about UFC 241 um, in a moment but just to reiterate again guys you can check out our packages on ProMMABetting.com we have a live betting service, a pre-betting service, we offer both services combined all of my bets are third party tracked UFC bets are tracked on betmma.tips boxing bets and if I do a double with the UFC and boxing say like I did for the Uruguay card they're all tracked on betting.gs and all live bets are tracked on betting.gs as well all the links to those free tracker sites are below this video you can also find a link to all three on my website ProMMABetting.com pride myself on my transparency guys as I've said before and if you are a first time listener I will always post bet slips and I will show the stakes as well 
I like to prove that I'm betting what I'm tipping and I like to verify that we are the world's highest stakes MMA tipster as well and you can know if I'm putting a play out I'm betting it as well my balls are going to be on the line if, normally a max play for me is like four units which for me is is 4k I got to the point where I couldn't compound my unit size beyond a thousand pounds per unit I tried it and I just felt too uncomfortable betting with with that much money on the on the line so kind of capped it at 4k max bet for me bet slips as I said they are posted you can view them um, live betting slips are posted as well what I normally use now is I get members on discord as the bets come in I get them just to screenshot them and I will post them on the Twitter it, it just kind of verifies that there is a service there we do have many members you can see that it's different people that are supplying the slips because it's it's different betting sites generally you'll notice that the money is in all different currencies so I just like to add extra uh, validation to the service so we do that as well um, and as I've said before guys we don't we're not going to send you out tips for an event where we're going to risk 40 units absolute suicide 40% of your bankroll in one night is dumb as fuck if you have a bad night nearly half your bankroll wiped out go for it again the following week have another bad night you've lost all your bankroll like I said normally 10 units absolute kind of max that we're at risk across an event I'm not going to jeopardize your bankrolls but what I will say, and I've said it many times, with me, you're not going to win 30, 40, 40 units in a night. You're not even going to win 20 units in a night. It's a slow and steady approach. This is a, a long ball game. This is a marathon, not a sprint. You will make money with me long term, but you have to take the long term view. There's no point signing up to this service if you're going to expect great results after a week or even a month. You've got to be with me long term, guys. It's a long-term service. It's a, this is like investing to me. You know, you tell someone, "Oh, you you gamble with." You know, this instant opinion is, "Oh, you're a loser." You, you know, no one wins money gambling. Blah 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 blah. You do win money gambling. Changed my life, guys. I started betting recreationally. Didn't really, ex I, mean, I didn't expect to go anywhere. I was just doing it for fun, and kind of I was winning more than I was losing. I built a little bankroll. And I started to take it a bit more serious and the, the bankroll kept growing and growing. You can win money from sports betting, especially on MMA. This is a sport where it, it, it isn't like other sports where they have models like for baseball and football and soccer and things like that. It doesn't apply to MMA. It's so unpredictable. There's so many variables. It can be a bitch as a better because you can think you've got everything nailed down to a T and then bam just one punch one kick it, it's game over um, and trusting people's fight IQs as well you know it can be a it, it can be soul destroying sometimes but you will win money long term with me betting on MMA and boxing that is pretty much guaranteed but you've got to have that view it's an investment if you invest in stocks and shares you don't expect to double your money in a month You've got to take the same approach with, with MMA betting, but I think you'll get faster results than you will with a lot of these stocks that people invest money in. Our members this year are up, if they've used £100, $100 per unit, £9,400 or dollars when you combine the pre-betting and live betting service. It's a great investment, guys. And as I said earlier, it's only $440 or £350 for the year, but... Obviously, people that are subscribing for the year are taking, I hope, the long-term view. People that buy the weeklies, I don't recommend the weekly, guys. I might even pull the weeklies from the subscription service because you're not going to get a feel for the service. It's just, it's not fair. It's not fair on you, really. I mean, we could have a good week, and you'll think I'm the best, you know, best thing since sliced bread. And then you'll sign up for a you might sign up for a month and then you know we have a rocky month you can't win every UFC event guys there's going to be losses but the wins outweigh the losses you've just got to take that long term approach with me and I'm the most transparent guy out there I dare you to prove to me that another guy that is charging for tips on MMA or boxing is more transparent than me they're not so yeah that's the service guys if you want to subscribe as I said ProMMABetting.com I'm going to jump into UFC 241 now. As I say, it's going to be more of a quick fire round. So let's have a um, 
let's have a quick roll through the fights. I've done tape on pretty much every fight. I actually had Friday off work to do the whole card because I was going away. I'd done tape for like seven hours straight. So some of the details that I noted at the time kind of probably merged into one. I'm, there's going to be some intricate stuff that I've, I'm going to for, have forgotten because I just literally had to do the tape all in one day. I'm incredibly busy, guys, with offering this service with my work, with my family life. So, uh, yeah, I took the day off to do the tape. So if we just run through the card really quickly, let me just go to Wikipedia just so we do the fight order correct. So first fight of the night is Sabina Mazzo against Shayna Dobson, women's flyweight. Uh, pass this fight, guys. Do not... Don't bet on it. I mean, look, if you've got a heavy lean, then or you think you have, you know, who am I to say don't bet on it? But I gave up on tape. I couldn't bear it. I remember Sabina, before her UFC debut, I'd done tape on her. And she got an inflated line, inflated height, because she got them two head kick knockout wins um, on the regional circuits. She she isn't great, but she is young, so she could be improving. She's very young, like 21, I think. She's at King's. She's at a good gym. I don't really know if she's got many women to train with there, just from looking on her Instagram, and that seems to money would be with fellas. But, I mean, she is at a really good camp. She is young. So one of the big things I learned in betting is you can't underestimate these youngsters and the improvements they make. But it's women's MMA. <laughs> um, Shana Dobson's got decent boxing, but she isn't great herself. Now, Mazo was the favourite. The line's flipped now. There's no way. I kind of gave up on tape as well because I went in hoping I was going to like Mazo. I done. I watched her fight with Marais and it was just meh. Like, I can't bet her. Started to look at Dobson and I was just like, I'm not betting Dobson as a favourite either. So the line's currently Dobson minus 130, Mazo plus 110. Look, pass fight. But a gun to my head, I had to pick. I'd go with Mazo as the young upstart from the good camp and plus she's the underdog as well and this is a betting podcast guys like I said I try and make this a bit different to the other podcasts that are kind of mainly centralised and just making predictions and so forth fight goes to a decision at the moment is minus 300 I can't see there being a finish you know Mazo I mean she has got that head kick but you're fading a head kick and in women's MMA it seems pretty unlikely um, so if you've got a nice leg that you want to parlay and you're struggling to find, if this holds at around minus 300, I think it's worth a look. It will get better up as the week goes on. It'll probably end up closing around minus 400, which I'd pass on. But at the minute, if you want another leg, don't go crazy. I'm not saying go if you really like another leg, you need a partner for it. I wouldn't say this is a f max kind of bet, but if you wanted to throw a unit down on whatever the other leg is you like and you want to double it with this, I don't think it's a, the worst idea in the world. But... Pass fight for me as a as a better, but I'll go with Mazo just because she's the young upstart and everyone seems to be betting Dobson. The lines flipped and Dobson isn't good, but I can see how she can win the fight. So yeah, we'll pass on pass on that one. Uh, we've got Brandon Davis against Kai Young Ho Kang. Brandon, we know he's a striker. He's just gone down to 135 at his first fight at 135. Last fight, he's real, real big bantamweight. But so's Kang. No idea how Kang makes bantamweight. He's gigantic. Kang kind of fell in love a little bit with his striking. I think Davis will be too much for him on the feet. So Kang needs to go to his wrestling here. He's got good takedowns and he's very good on top. And that has been Davis's weakness. We've seen that in his UFC career. He had, he's been a bit unlucky with his matchmaking, Davis, to be fair, outside of the Arnett fight. And then his last fight, he has a tough fight stylistically, and it seems like another tough one stylistically for him. As long as Kang fights intelligently, uses his takedowns, I think Davis is going to have a, a tough time underneath Kang. He's so big and he's dangerous on the mat. I'm not in love with the price, though. Kang's about minus 175 last time I looked. Just got some, I don't know, since he had that big layoff, he's come back. It just looks like he's falling a little bit in love with his striking. Like he had an all that slugfest with Ishihara. I mean, eventually he took him down, but it just makes me a little bit worried that it, what's his game plan going to be, be here in it. I mean, I looked through fight metrics. It's been a number of years since he heavily used takedowns in terms of, you know, went for more than like two or three in a fight. So 
little bit risky this one um, I feel personally but if he fights smart he should win so I'm going to go with Kang to win probably a decision Davis does you know he can get taken down but he's pretty tough to finish so I'll go with Kang to win a decision here but he, he does need to fight smart I mean you can argue that he, you know against Ramos for example you know maybe he stood with him because he thought he could win on the feet Ramos Jin Jiu Jitsu black belt athletic guy tough to take down maybe striking he thought was the path of least resistance but you've got to think here he comes out trying to grapple so I'll go with Kang to win a decision um, Hannah Cyphers taking on Jody Esquivel you've got to go with Cyphers here Esquivel's on a horrid run she isn't very good yeah Cyphers the, only, the, the, the line is a little bit higher she's like minus 260 I think slow level women's MMA so it's just hard to get behind a big bet I think you could use Cyphers uh, as I said earlier if you've got a leg that you like that you but you'd like to um, bet it with something else I, I, I guess you could use Cyphers but you should be happy to bet a line straight if you're going to use it in a double as well and she just seems a little bit just because it's low level women's MMA but Escabelle's just not good. I mean, she lost to Jessica Aguilar in the 2018 version of Jessica Aguilar. That's not a good look. Aguilar's just done completely. So, I'll go with Cyphers. She's, she hits hard on the feet. She's decent striking. Escabelle's just not good. So, Cyphers, probably a decision, but she does crack Cyphers. But Escabelle's... She is tough. I'll give her that. But I've got to go Cyphers there. And, yeah, I think if you look into to double her with another leg you like I think that's doable Drakkar Close taking on Christos Gagos next uh, looking forward to this fight I like Drakkar Close very um he doesn't excel anywhere but he's got really good cardio he's got brings good pressure he's very gritty he disrupts rhythm really well he doesn't let people get into a set flow um, on paper for me anyway I, 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 on paper I, I didn't see him beating Lando really I didn't see him beating Mark Diacasey Bobby Green as well I thought was a tough fight for him um, I nearly bet Bobby Green in that fight but he, and I know there's, a, there's quite a lot of controversy over that decision against Green but I remember I live betted close after round one um, and I thought he won the fight and I really I, I rewatched it for purposes for this and I've got no problem with Close getting that decision at all. I thought he won that fight. Um so yeah, Close he's just awkward to deal with. He's he doesn't as I said, doesn't excel anywhere, but he's just gritty, tough, in your face, good cardio. And they're some of the best attributes to have in MMA. You see fighters go really far in MMA that just not necessarily great anywhere, but man, they're just tough, relentless, in your face. Gagos, he's got good wrestling, he's got solid striking but man his cardio sucks and you know I went back and watched some of his ACB fights and it's the same, same thing again the Car cardio issue just rears its head all the time his takedown defence isn't great either which something he hasn't really had to worry about in the UFC except for the Oliveira fight and he was he was on the back foot for that while that fight lasted because he was he was worried about being taken down now that is Oliveira he's a massive submission threat which close isn't but um, it's just uh, just something we haven't seen really with Gagos he did get out wrestled in round 2 of his last ACB fight against I can't remember the Brazilian's name but got out wrestled there he slowed down but the Brazilian gassed badly as well and he, the Gagos managed to nick round 3 I haven't really seen close fight someone that's tried to, to wrestle him heavily either so the kind of the, the wrestling's going to be interesting here, but I just see him slowing down from Close's pace and the Close doing what he's done. He's beaten better guys than Gagos in the UFC. I'm going to go Close decision. Um, the Lion at about minus 200. Uh, it's hard to... It's easy to underappreciate Close. That's what I took from going back and watching tape on him. He's had that split from MMA lab. Seems in a bit of turmoil. A lot of them are going to fight ready with Eddie Char so he's had that split but yeah I do favour him here and I think the overs are uh, I mean it's getting better up now I see it's at minus 265 now and I think if it holds around there again it's worth it's worth a bet or if you want to parlay something and you're looking for another leg I think that's another option you can look at as well but I wouldn't bet it above the minus 265 mark it's probably going to end up closing 
minus 300 or so. But good fight, but I'll take close. Uh, Manny Bermudez, Casey Kenny, a really interesting fight. Looking forward to this one. Casey Kenny, he looked solid in his UFC debut. He's very well rounded. Um, he's got solid cardio. He did slow down in both the contender series fights, but I kind of uh, it, that, that's kind of a bit of an anomaly. The contender series, it's a bit like the Ultimate Fighter is, um, and he fought twice in six weeks as well. So kind of didn't really get a second training camp, and he's obviously had to do the weight cut again. This is up at 135. I can see a lot of people on Kenny. I'd, I'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he closes as the favourite. But you've got to be really careful not to underestimate Bermudez. It's easy to watch tape on him and think, oh, you know, he's sub or bust. But we don't have a full read on him. He's young. We haven't seen his full game since the Morales fight. Now in that fight, his striking didn't look great. His takedowns didn't look great. But it's been 18 months really since we've seen his striking properly. We've only seen small glimpses of it since, and he did drop David Grant. His last fight wasn't on the feet for long against Benito Lopez, but just the way he was moving, he look he looks better on the feet to me. So I think you've got to be really careful not to just write him off as a sub or bust kind of guy. And he, he's a bit of a he could be a bit of a Brian Ortega. So you, you know, normally guys like this, yeah, I'm like you know he's. He's not very well rounded, he just excels in one area, this is modern MMA, but you do find these exceptions to the rule that are just fuckers and they just pull out the wins and he's fought in an eye for a reason. This guy finishes fights, he's he's good at opportunistic wins. And these guys that are you know, you don't find too many guys that are opportunistic like a Manny Bermudez. But you put your neck anywhere, he's all over it. And he's got a really good snap down into a guillotine. Now, he hit it on Lopez and he hit it on Morales, who are both tall fighters, like similar height. Kenny's shorter, so it's definitely going to be there for him here. Now, I'm not just kind of saying be careful because of one possible submission threat, because then obviously you've got to take Kenny. But we just don't know how Bermudez is striking his now. It could be a lot better. We don't know what his cardio is like, really. Has Kenny got the better cardio? Probably, but uh, I'm making an assumption. Um, the Morale West fight was a while ago. It was his UFC debut. He, he, he's probably a lot more comfortable in the octagon there, so his cardio might not it might not fade. So this is a real hard fight for me to to pick. I was well, I went into tape hoping that I'd like Kenny to bet him as the dog, but um, I don't want to I don't want to write Bermudez off. Because I just got a feeling he's not going to look like the same Bermudez we saw against Morales. I mean, surely he's rounding his game out. It's the UFC, and he's he is very dangerous with his submissions. So, I mean, current lines really, it's gone to almost a pick on there. So it's a pass from a betting perspective for me. I don't really like inside the distance or goes the distance. I'm going to pick. I'm going to go against the grain, and I'm thinking all the Twitter are pretty much on Kenny. And I could look, I could look well off here because Kenny, when you look at the tape that's available, he is the more well-rounded fighter. He is very good. I didn't like how much he gave his back up to Ray Borg either when he was getting back to his feet. Someone like Bermudez is going to be, I think, a lot more dangerous than Borg in terms of finishing. If you give your back up, he's more opportunistic with them submissions. So I'm gonna go hard fight to call for me. I'm gonna just I'm gonna go with Bermudez though to win this one. But a Kenny win wouldn't surprise me at all. And anyone that got the, the early numbers on Kenny, I think he was up at like plus one thirty, one forty. I think that's a solid bet, but at the moment, probably a pass. Um a Sunsell, Sandhagen. This just comes down to whether a Sunsell can get the takedowns. I think he gets eaten on the feet. It's thirty seven now, I think. He's probably going to be declining. He's, you know, he's a bantamweight. It's it's hard to maintain that high level when you're a bantamweight because you do rely on your reflexes and speed and explosiveness more than the the guys up the higher end of of weight. And that is the first stuff that starts to go as you age. He does have a path to victory here. He, you know, he used his wrestling and his top control against a Rob Font. You don't really see it so much from a Sunsal because he's He's had, you know, he's been fighting the, the best of the best, or or fighters where he's he's not had to use his grappling and he's been happy to stand with them. 
but I definitely think he gets bashed on the feet. This could be a someone described it to me as a possible par passing of the torch fight. Definitely feel that could be the case. But it's just tough to be confident because we haven't seen Sandhagen's get up game really. I mean, we've seen him hit some like a rolling Kimura, I think it was he hit on Mario Batista and he got up against Lineker and Austin Arnett, but this isn't that they aren't a Sun Sao. This guy's a legitimate grappler, heavy top control. But I'm gonna go Sandhagen. I have to go with a young emerging prospect. My gut says that he'll be able to get back to his feet, but I'm making an assumption there. I think if you're betting it, you 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 have to make. If you're betting Sandhagen, you've you've got to make that assumption. But I I just don't think it's a a big bet type of fight just because there is that unknown. But I do see Sandhagen being too much and on the feet. He switches stances well. He cuts angles well. He's probably not going to be as as in front of a Sun Tzu as someone like Rob Font was. So I'll go with Sandhagen, probably to win by decision here. The line's at about minus 160. I think it's bettable, but I just don't think it's it's a big bet just because of the unknowns. Clay Collard, late notice replacement coming in against Devontae Smith. Yeah, Smith's going to... I mean, I, I haven't gone back and watched tape. I can I can kind of vaguely remember Clay from his last run in the UFC, and, and I, I believe he's coming off a like 30-second loss a few weeks ago. So... Highly confident, inspiring. I've, the line's completely gone though. I think Smith's at like minus 800 or something crazy. So, yeah, I mean, you could look at maybe inside the distance, but it's probably just a pass. Smith's going to get a good win here, keep the hype going. Um, going to the main card, Derek Brunson, Ian Heinish. So, Ian's back again. He's been very impressive so far. He's beaten two of the better grapplers at middleweight in Shoeface and Cesar Fajaya. Um, again, it doesn't really excel anywhere, but he's well rounded. He's got power in his right hand, and he's just sets a high pace for a middleweight. He's very tenacious. He's very gritty. He's been in Riker's prison, which, from all accounts, is a tough, tough place to be. So mentally, he's he seems extremely tough. He's a tough guy to deal with. As I've said about when I was talking about the close fight, those those intangibles go so far in MMA it's crazy really um, I'm not saying he's not skilled he's, he's well rounded everywhere just doesn't excel anywhere but those intangibles that he brings of the pace the cardio the grittiness the mental strength goes a long way in MMA and you saw that against Vahaya and um, Shoeface who were both better grapplers than him but he just Outworked them, out, out grinded them. His will to win. You know he lost the first round in both them fights, but the guy came back and won. Derek Brunson, I just don't know where he's at. He's 35 now. I mean, he's never fixed his striking deficiencies. He's got legitimate power. You cannot sleep on his power. He's definitely got power, but he still holds his chin height. It's just a novice thing to do. I don't know what, how that's never been fixed. It's an easy thing to fix for most people anyway but he's just never fixed it so I don't know what he's I, I just don't know what I mean he's got the rest in here Ian's takedown defence isn't great but Ian does have really good get ups and if you're getting up from under Cesar Fajaya and Shoeface with their submission threat I just don't see what kind of a threat Fajaya uh, sorry that Brunson brings from top position I just don't see it so I don't see Ian kind of being worried about giving his back to, to try and get back to his feet I think he will work back to his feet pretty quickly I think Brunson worries a little bit about his cardio now he doesn't wrestle we haven't seen him wrestle heavily since the I think it was the Larkin fight like five years ago and in that fight, kind of got fairly easy takedowns and Larkin offered nothing of his back. Ian's going to make Derek work, working his way back to his feet. Uh, he's going to be in his face. He's going to be pushing the pace. Now, Brunson could knock him out. He does have that legitimate power, but it seems like it's kind of round one or, or bust for him. Um, Ian's line is dropping as well. I've seen it's now down maybe minus 150. 
Um, I, I like Ian here personally. I think this is a fight he's going to win. I think he's just going to win it like he won the last two really. He's just going to outwork the Derek here. At Grittim, Brunson, just, uh, just, I've just not, I've not thought highly of him lately. I mean, Elias is a difficult guy to look good against. Don't get me wrong, but just like he's striking, just even in that fight, it just didn't look great. I mean, it was just a, just a bit of a shit show. Like I said, Elias is hard to look good against, but just I wasn't overly impressed with with his performance in that fight, and. He's just not looked good to me in the I mean he's had a you know a number of round one quick finishes but you know you, you there's only a, but I mean the opposition to be fair was questionable in most of them wins. He got a nice win over Uriah Hall, but even you know Uriah's kind of comes with his own question marks. So yeah, I just think Ian's just gonna be too much for, for Derek here. He has to be careful round one, but I just think he outworks, out grinds, and probably win. Well, wins a decision over Derek here. One thing I've not looked at actually: what the price is on this fight to go to distance. That's possibly interesting. Um, so Brunson Ian fight to go. That's even money. Wow, fight goes to decision. Look, I mean, if you like Ian, Ian's minus 150 for point three points. You might as well just play Ian. But if you're kind of unsure and you don't think Brunson puts him away, I think fight goes to a decision is a decent bet. So I doubt Ian finishes him. And Brunson is, I mean, if you looked at his record, I think all of his wins inside the distance, at least in the UFC, are in round one. So... I mean, it's even money. Fight goes to a decision, and you could even possibly, if you. I mean, I'm not really into hedging, but if you're one of them people that likes to hedge, you could maybe hedge with Brunson round one. I don't know what that that those odds will be. I imagine you'll probably get plus 400 on it, maybe. So even money line hedge with Brunson round one. Again, it wouldn't go big guys because I, you know, you're making a couple of bets then and. Brunson comes out and knocks him out in round two and then you're fucked on both bets. Um, or you just, you know, ride with fight goes to a decision if you if you like that bet and you don't worry about the hedging and just take the L if it comes or hopefully the W. But I think that is an interesting line that that's a pick em because I don't see Ian finishing and Brunson is pretty much round one or bust. So I, I definitely think that, that line... It would be interesting to see how that line closes but I imagine fight goes to a decision will end up possibly being in the minus 160 area but speculation on my part um, next we go to Yo Romero making his return he's been out a while the, the genetic freak he's 41 now against Paulo Costa um, look I'm not confident here and I'm not betting against Yo Romero last time I bet against him he gave me probably the biggest sweat of my betting career against Rob Whittaker when I mean Whittaker was cruising won the first two rounds comfortably and then or was it the first three rounds comfortably and then it was just oh, those last two rounds were horrible it was like I remember it was about 6am in the morning here and it was just turned into a giant sweat um, to be fair, I thought it should have been a draw, and I was big on Whitaker, but Whitaker still got the decision. Um, the problem with Yo, it's his, it's his volume. I mean, he's been out a while. I think it's 15 months or so. His age, I I just don't think he's dropped off physically yet. I just can't see it. The guy just looks an absolute freak. I like he's not going to drop off physically till he's like 50. I mean, it's an assumption, but. I definitely wouldn't be betting Costa here thinking that there's a possibility or you know that's part bit that being part of your reasoning for Romero for betting against Romero is he might have dropped off I I just don't think he's going to have he could have but I I wouldn't bet I wouldn't bet against it um I've saw a picture of him recently and it just looked ridiculous still absolutely ridiculous physically so yeah I definitely wouldn't bring that into your reasoning but it's his volume that concerns me. I mean, he's—I mean, he's got some ridiculous power, but 
if he doesn't land, he can get out volumed. And he's obviously got the wrestling, but it's not something he's ever really relied on. Never really seen him go out and kind of, you know, make that a central part of his of his process. I mean, he has mixed it in. We've seen him take down Machida and finish him with ground and pound. Um, there's other fighters he's taken. They tried to take down Whitaker. He couldn't get Whitaker down. So it'd be interesting to see what his strategy is here. Um, I mean, Costa looks... I mean, when we're talking about uh, physical specimens, I mean, Yo Romero's top of the list, but this guy is not far behind him at all. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to go with Costa here. I'm not confident. It's just Romero is a better. Romero just worries me with his volume. It just, it just worries me. Unless he lands that kill shot, this could be a. I, I think it will be a big sweat. Um, I mean, from memory, even the Rockhold rematch. I think Rockhold was kind of handily winning that, if I remember correctly. I've not gone back and looked at Yol's fights deeply here, because I knew I wouldn't be betting it. But I'm sure Rockhold was even until he got caught. So you know what happens if. He doesn't catch Costa, or Costa could have a granite chin for all we know. Just think he could be out volumed. The lines come down, so I, I don't really think there's any vol any value really on Costa now because Yol's at plus one, uh, minus one fifty, so Costa will be about plus one twenty. For me personally, it's a it's kind of a a, a pass fight. Fight to end inside the distance. Oh, minus 350. Yeah, I don't like that. It's too steep. If it goes to a decision, plus 250. You're going to be sweating your balls off. I wouldn't even... <laughs> Look, I guess it's worth a... St no, I don't even know if it is. I was going to say, if it goes to a decision, might be worth a stab. But it's just... A st so you're going to be sweating. I, I, I see there being a finish, but it's just too steep. For me, personally, it's it's no play at the current lines. <sighs> Costa... Uh, if. Costa gets back to plus 150, I, I think possibly worth looking at, but it, it's just a hard fight to call. So we don't really know how good Costa is either. He's not really, you know, this is a big step up for him. Let's not forget that. But really interesting fight. I'm really interested in seeing Romero back. It's a shame he's so old and he's, he's not going to have that long left because the guy is just a phenom. But I'm going to pick Costa. Uh, Yol's volume is is my big worry. And as a better, I don't want to be betting on a low volume guy that I'm relying on getting a knockout blow because I can't rely on Yol wrestling. So I'll go with Costa, but it's definitely not a confident uh, confident pick there, guys. Uh, we got Anthony Pettis taking on Nate Diaz. Nate's been out for nigh on three years. This is at welterweight. Pettis, look, I don't think this is some fairy tale comeback for Pettis after the Wonder Boy win. He was he was getting smashed. Good for him. He landed the knockout blow. But I still don't really know where Pettis is at. I still think he's on his way out. I'd be re I mean you've got the low kicks here. This is going to be part of his strategy, surely. He's going to use low kicks against Diaz. It's always been a problem for him. He's never been able to check them. They, they've always he's so many examples where he's had his legs chewed up, but he's got real good boxing. He's got great cardio. I was, I was having a look on his Instagram, and it looks like he's been he's been doing um the uh, what you call them Iron Man events still or triathlons, whatever they're called. So he's gonna I'm sure he's still gonna be in fantastic shape, but three years is a long time out in the octagon Pettis has to use the low kicks here but I mean I see so I see a lot of people that are really confident in Pettis here I mean it's not reflected in the line because last time I looked Pettis was minus 120 just have a look if that's changed he's minus 130 now so he's been bit a little bit Honestly, for me, the, from a betting perspective, look, I kind of like Diaz here, but I just can't bet him because of the layoff. Don't know what he's going to look like. He might. Is he going to? How sharp is he going to look? Because I just don't think. I think Pettis is. Is I don't think he belongs at welterweight. He looks pretty bloated at welterweight. 
Um, I mean, Diaz shouldn't really be at world weight either, I don't think. But I think his frame is more more suited to it, and and kind of looks more like a genuine world weight as opposed to Pettis, who yeah, just looks a bit bloated to me. But fight goes to a decision. I think this goes to a decision. I don't see a finish. It's up at nearly minus 200 now. And I think if you're on the fence on this fight and you want to bet it, I think that's the line to bet. In terms of a winner, I'm going to pick Diaz. I'm going to pick Diaz here. I'm not confident because you, I just can't bet someone coming off such a long layoff. And, you know, the leg kicks is a genuine concern. I doubt he's adapted his game. He's still going to be susceptible to them. But we've seen how good his boxing can be. And his hands are definitely better than Diaz's. Is. Sorry, Pettis's. Is. This is going to be a stand-up fight, I imagine. I mean, could, Diaz mi uh, could Pettis mix in some tight hands here? It's a possibility. It's definitely a possibility. I think if things are going a little bit south on the feet for him, I think it's definitely an area to explore. But, I mean, we've only really seen Pettis work from the bottom. I mean, he's really dangerous from the bottom. It's not. I think it's going to be a stand-up fight. I'm going to go Diaz, but I can, I can see the Pettis argument, but I just can't bet him as a favourite. I just don't know how much he's got left. You know, I... I think going up to welterweight was a bit of a, like, I don't know what to do. Let's just try a welterweight. I, he's not a welterweight. He should be a lightweight. And I think, I mean, he might get away with it against Diaz because, as I said, Diaz isn't a, a genuine welterweight. But I think there's going to be a fight very soon where if Petter stays at welterweight, he's going to suffer a, a, a beating. And he's had enough of them already, I think. I think he's, you know... I, I was kind of surprised he didn't retire after his last loss at, at lightweight. I thought it was kind of going that way for him. Or was his last fight at featherweight, actually, not lightweight, before he moved up to welterweight. But I just don't think he's looked good for a while, Pettis. So I'm going to go Diaz, but I, I can't bet it personally. Um, fight goes to a decision is something I am potentially interested in. But we don't get the lines here in the UK till later in the week, and... If, if, if it's any more expensive by then, I definitely can't touch it. Um, main event, we've got the rematch for the heavyweight title. We've got DC taking on Miocic. I kicked myself hard after the first fight for not betting DC. He was a, he, I remember he was a plus 200 underdog. And I kept saying to myself, I, I thought Miocic was going to win, I'll be honest, but... You know, DC's one of the GOATs, one of the greatest of all time. And I said it's just disrespect that he's plus 200. And I didn't bet it. Really, really regretted that. Um, I mean, I know Miocic started well, but, you know, DC put him away. I, I, I hear the eye poke being mentioned and, and so forth. But, look, he lost the fight. Uh, he got knocked out. So we know DC's got the power to put Miocic away. Can Miocic put DC away? I mean, the guy has shown he's got a granite chin. It's only the Jones head kick that's ever managed to stop him. But his age is a concern. He is getting up there in age. But we know age doesn't affect heavyweights as much as it does lighter guys because they have never really rely on their, their reflexes and speed as much as guys in the lower weight classes. So it's a hard fight to call. I'm definitely... I'm kind of dissuaded from any betting angle here because inside the distance is pretty juiced. Cormier is now minus 140 as opposed to the plus 200 last time. And then Stipe is kind of a rand even money and he's he's coming off a knockout loss to DC. Now I know he's going to be hungry. He's been calling for this rematch for ages. But I'm going with DC again. DC's shown he's got the power to put him away. And I don't know if Stipe can put Cormier away. So in terms of paths to victory, I, f I can see Stipe winning a decision. I can see um, DC winning a decision as well, though. So I see more paths to victory for DC here. But, yeah, I mean, there is the age and so forth. But for someone like DC, I'm not going to factor that into my cap in. He's one of the best of all time. You know, you've just got to take the risk, I think, that he's, he's still the same DC. And you, you just don't factor it in until you actually actually see that there's a, a decline. 
but I'll go with DC here to win as I said not massively confident I can't say I recommend the play at the current line either it's a I think it's a pass fight at the moment from a betting perspective I'd definitely be interested in DC if it does drop to an even money line but I'm not sure it's going to it's kind of held steady I think DC's come down actually I think he was a bigger favourite early on but it's kind of held at the price he's at now for a while but who knows it's a it's a pay-per-view event they normally generate more money in terms of from a betting perspective so there might be some late action so I'm keen to see if that line does move and if DC does drop to uh, to even money but I'm going to pick DC here to win this fight and I think he's going to put Stipe away again and look, I was going to say DC maybe retire after but if he does put Stipe away again then he's obviously not shown any any decline so you know would he invite Bones up to heavyweight and run it for a third time well, I don't know everyone would like to see it especially Jones up at heavyweight against DC who would not have that horrific weight cut that he used to struggle with but yeah I'll go with uh, DC here to, to retain his title so that wraps up the picks guys um, as I said I've got some picks out with members already if you'd like to uh, subscribe I can get them picks out to you and hopefully we can keep our, our winning run going for the year make some bank on UFC 241 um, I'm out of the country but I will be uh, tuning in to watch the event and hopefully everyone who's betting can have a successful weekend winning on the UFC again as I said website ProMMABetting.com for the packages Twitter at ProMMABetting hit the subscribe button please guys give us a like if you if you've liked the the breakdown for this particular card and I don't believe there's a UFC next week. I think we've got a week off finally. So I'll be back in a couple of weeks to break down the next card, which I'm, I'm not aware what it is at the moment at all. But well well needed respite actually, because it's just been week on week on week of churning out tape after tape. I think we had nine UFCs in a row. So, so yeah, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. So good luck everyone. Speak soon.